Welcome, race fans. You've now joined for the second week of the 2021 Summer Interim Series of PCA Sim Racing, hosted by the Wild West Zones. This week, we are at Bathurst, which is also commonly referred to as Mount Panorama. This is a really, really big track with the Australian V8 supercars. Um, I used to watch those on TV any chance I got on the Speed Channel, and uh, when I had the opportunity to in iRacing, I did take one of those cars around this track and crashed all the way up and all the way down. This is a track where there's a very thin margin of error. A lot of times you can um, drive a, a track where a setup or your experience can bail you out of tough situations. And around Bathurst, the margin for error is so thin that even an experienced driver with a pristine setup can unload the rear end at an inopportune moment or lose front end by end and wind up hitting the wall. And that there can end your day. It is a very tough track. In fact, one of our EDE instructors described it as a Jekyll and Hyde track because it's a track that half the track you're going uphill and the car handles very differently. The other half you're coming downhill and it changes everything about what you're expecting, where you can turn in, where you have traction, where you don't. Um, and it becomes a real interesting challenge of a racetrack. Here we got 40 minutes of racing. For all classes, this is going to be a real adventure. Um, I don't think anyone is walking into this feeling overly confident, um, and a few people are feeling actually quite quite timid, myself included. Uh, this is my first time racing this track uh, in an actual race, and uh, I'm, I'm not afraid to tell you that uh, it's harrowing. It's, uh, it's going to be a tough race, but it'll be a good race because it's about survival. But unlike, again, most other tracks, um, this track will bite you one of two ways. For being too aggressive, which makes perfect sense, that's true of most tracks, not being aggressive enough is another side effect of this track. So if you're not aggressive enough, sometimes you wind up uh, causing yourself more harm than good as well. So it is definitely going to be an interesting evening to see who can ride that middle lane in between aggressive and timid. And keep control of the car and uh, survive the full race. There are three fast repairs for everybody in this race, which means that if you do total your car, if you can get a tow back to pits, you'll get a brand new car that you can go back out and uh, recover yourself, but that's gonna cost time and obviously places in uh, the finish. So um, sit back, strap in, enjoy the ride. Hey, before you forget, if you do like the content, click like. And if you want to be notified of uh, videos as they get launched, go ahead and click on subscribe and uh, YouTube will let you know anytime I launch a new video. I am actually tracking my progress in the official iRacing GT3 Challenge Fixed Series as well as this series. So if you like good racing, close, uh, close GT3 racing and are interested, please do check into uh, my coverage of that particular series. Thank you and uh, enjoy the ride. The track temp is well. 74 Fahrenheit. The air temp is 74 Fahrenheit. Good luck to you guys. And um, <laughs> I'll try to make it through 8 and 9. Follow car number 27 in the right lane. Okay, Chip, get ready. Green, green, green.
Sorry I'm not talking much. I did qualify third. You saw there was a bit of a kerfuffle there. Disaster at the start for a bunch of folks behind us. Not sure what caused that exactly, but... Now I'm chasing Volker down, who's chasing Federico down, but of course Federico has, like, decided that he needs to pick up milk in the next county or something. I don't know what his deal is. He's fast. Volker was uh, about even with me most of practice. He did really well in the prelude, but I made a mistake thinking he was giving me room to pass him in the qualifying, and so he qualified back. And so I figure it's fair to let him run up here in front of me for a while. Although I think I might be a tad faster than he is. Not fast where it matters, where I can actually pass it, which is disheartening. Volker's got nerves of steel. I don't think I'm going to unsettle him back here, so just bide my time for a bit. Okay, Chip, keep piling on the pressure. He'll make a mistake. There's an incident in Skyline. Looks like P4 has built it in McPhillamy Park. On your left, on your left. P3. Keep the pressure on. Don't give him any respite. I don't think that Jim's a member of the PCA. <laughs> Good chip, good stuff, keep it coming.
Ground behind has increased to 1.9. Come on, Dal. Well done, Chip. You're looking really good. Come on, keep your focus. P2, sector 3 is 0.6. Off the pace. Please remember not to call out any other drivers over the radio. Your lap time was 210.26. is now 2.4 seconds. So everybody remind me not to get too used to the steering like this, because it'll get fixed in my pit stop. You've used half your fuel. Gingerly I go.
from the guy behind. The gap's now 4.6. Got 10 minutes of fuel remaining. The lap time was at 209.05. Federico's 12 seconds up the road. I don't think I'm going to catch him. The gap behind is now 8.5. P2. Got about three laps of fuel left in the tank. Volker just let me know if you want to pass. All right. 20 minutes to go, 20 minutes. Okay, Chip, we're halfway through. We estimate six minutes of fuel left. Incident in McPhillamy Park. Front is now 12 seconds. Well, he's not gaining, I guess. But he doesn't have to.
Yeah, I've got two left if you want. That's five minutes of fuel left. The gap behind is now 9.3 seconds. Gas pitting. Very little fuel left. Hit this lap. In this lap. One gallon remaining. <laughs> Alright Chip, 15 minutes left, that's 15 minutes. <laughs> Half a gallon left. Hit, hit, hit. Pit lane speed limit is 31 miles per hour. We'll fuel you to the end of the race. Lost a second there at pit entrance, checking my speed. And getting on the limiter. That's 300 feet. 100 feet.
exit is clear. Watch the white line. Gap to Palmer ahead is increasing. It's now 3.3 seconds. The gap ahead is now 6.5 seconds. Almost followed him right off track. That would have been bad. Okay, Chip, 10 minutes to go. That's 10 minutes left.
gap in front is now 10 seconds. Okay, Chip, you're reeling this guy in. The gap's now 8.7 seconds. Too little, too late, I think. But it's fun to breathe. Ten minutes of fuel remaining, five minutes to go. This is good. We'll be on the podium if we can keep it together. That's the fastest lap.
The gap in front is now 8.9. Two minutes to go, two minutes. Chip, one more to go. Keep it together, we'll be on the podium. Not a lot of wheel to wheel racing in this one. So sorry for that. We estimate you've got five minutes of fuel remaining. Awesome finish. Yeehaw. Well done, Chip. Great drive. That's a podium. Second place. So that race turned out a little bit unexpectedly for me. I actually, I did a lot better than I ultimately expected to uh, manage to pull off a zero incident race uh, because the two scrapes with the wall were zero X's, so they didn't actually count. So I finished second with 0x, which uh, gave me the extra points. So I finished with 60 points um, in the race. 
not too bad. Um, fast lap at 207.675, which was, I think, the third fastest lap um, of the day. Uh, could have done better. Qualified third, though, so moved up one position. Can't be too mad at that. Um, Federico Del Toro, of course, uh, super, super fast. And um, he's somebody that uh, we saw last week uh, in the practice for the race, and he had video graphic problems because he's using VR. He wound up with a, a stutter, um, and his frames per second dropped like to 18 or something silly like that. So he, he didn't race uh, at uh, Nürburgring. Um, but I knew he was fast because he, he had the fastest time in practice uh, last week as well. So he came out um, and uh, dominated. Um, I was lucky enough to finish um, close to nine seconds uh, behind him, a um, little, little under that. Um, so overall, after 40 minutes, that ain't too bad. But uh, he's definitely somebody that I'll be chasing probably the rest of the series. Um, as far as overall points, um, basically what uh, Stephen Chen is doing is he's basically uh, uh, early discounting the lowest week as our drop race. And so um, last, uh, last week I had the 59 points. This week I got the 60, so the 60 will stand with just two races under the belt. So if I do worse um, down the road, um, then uh, these races will be counted. But for now, that's the lowest point. So um, it's, a, it's a decent picture. Um, keeps me in the same spot that I was in actually last week, which was third place um, in the standing. So, so not too shabby. Um, Federico, with his great performance this week, last week counting as his uh, drop, um, he is at the top of the standings. David Palmer, who won last week, um, uh, keeps at 60, but uh, Federico got the two extra bonus points for getting pole position and fastest lap um, in this race, so he uh, bests out David for top of the, uh, the stack there. Um, Keith Morgan, for some reason, didn't show up. We had a great race last week, and um, I expected him to show up and uh, have more of the same tonight, but uh, unfortunately that did not uh, turn out to be the case. So, Keith, hope you're okay, and I hope to see you next week. Um, as far as um, racing uh, goes, um, this race was... Uh, um, a little disappointing because the first lap, um, right after um, the the hell turn, turn one, um, positions P through whatever got caught in some sort of calamity. So um, Federico, Volker, and I just were off at the races um, because of course David had gone off track a little bit, had a little bit of an issue that may have contributed to that melee behind us. But I don't know. I haven't watched the replay yet. Regardless, though, um, that really separated the race so it wasn't, it wasn't all that entertaining and i'm sorry for that um it was 40 minutes of hot laps after uh um basically getting past volker and um, federico just drove away so it was just me by myself out there driving around driving my race staying on the track which probably ultimately was a good thing i wasn't chasing i wasn't pushing too hard um, had a couple of mental lapses where i brushed the wall as you saw but um other than that it was a pretty uneventful race which at this track was a blessing, I think. <laughs> Managed to stay out of trouble, and that's that's uh, more than you can ask for, really, here. So anyway, hope you enjoyed, and uh, hope you'll come back next week. Uh, we're at uh, Zandvoort next week, and uh, that's a fun track. If you've uh, if you've never driven it, it's, it's definitely a treat. It's got some very interesting um, uh, features, um, but it's a nice flowing track, um, and, and, and so it's, a, it's an enjoyable track. I look forward to that. Um, so join me again. Um, subscribe if you want to be notified uh, when I release new videos. And uh, if you liked what you saw, please click like so others can find it as well. And uh, come again. Thank you. Bye.